Generally, good streams don't become bad streams by themselves. What happens when we attempt to control the stream without understanding its natural tendencies? So generally, good streams don't turn into bad streams by themselves. Problems occur when we attempt to control the natural tendency of the stream with concrete or other uh, man-made materials that can find the stream and, uh, and completely stabilize the bank, such as with this channel right here. We're talking about various hard surface control techniques such as concrete, riprap, gabions, and culverts. As our cities have grown, we have often tried to control streams by encasing them in concrete. The concrete may control the stream right at that location, but it often causes problems elsewhere, both upstream and downstream. But as the water moves through here, the velocities increase, we get lots of lots of energy. And that's fine as it's moving through the channel, but then we reach the end of the channel and we have this high energy and the water moves out of the channel and it moves into the area where we have soil and you'll often have to try to reinforce this with big chunks of concrete or other rocks as it continues to move downstream there's still lots and lots of energy hitting that far bank and we're getting lots of erosion lots of soil loss from that area and that continues down the channel and then it meets another main channel and that high energy that high flow is still there we're getting our down cutting and our erosion our habitat degradation um, in, the, in those areas as well and that's all a result of these concrete channels that move water quickly off the landscape into our streams. Lining a stream in concrete can cause more problems than it solves. And it's not just concrete. Look around at cities and urban areas. You'll see many impervious surfaces. Big stretches of asphalt, rooftops, and even compacted dirt roads and parking lots increase the flow of water into the watershed. These hard surfaces cause another problem and that's increased velocity. A smooth concrete channel allows the water to build up velocity, increasing the downstream erosion potential and impairing habitats for fish and other aquatic animals. So to understand why confining water in a concrete channel or a culvert may cause more erosion, let's think about washing our car with a garden hose. If you take your garden hose with a normal flow and run it over your car, you may or may not get all of the dirt off of your car. If you take your thumb, put it over the garden hose, and lessen the amount of area that the water flows through, the velocity increases, the force increases, and it's probably going to wash all the dirt off of your car. And the smaller space for the water, the harder and faster the flow. Erosion is when the force on the stream bottom material is greater than the cohesive forces of the material. Every concrete channel is going to constrict the flow of a stream at some point over its course, particularly during a heavy rain event. The water speeds down the concrete with no opportunity to spread out or slow down. Natural streams and rivers have floodplains. This is the area adjacent to the stream. During heavy rains, water rises up and spreads out over the floodplain, slowing it down. The floodplain is a critical component of the stream system that dissipates energy during floods and reduces problems downstream. A heavily eroded stream can become detached from its floodplain through a process called downcutting. Downcutting is when swift water erodes the stream bed, creating a deeper channel. At the same time, the sides of the stream begin to erode in a process we call widening. Widening can occur from the detachment of particles from the stream bank, or very quickly from mass wasting where large chunks of soil are lost to the stream during high flows. So as our stream downcuts and widens as a result of the erosion processes that are going on during our storms, it's detached from the floodplains, which can cause a lot of issues, including loss of land, which is very important for our landowners. I believe that one, in one particular, uh, and it wasn't a huge flood, but in one shot, I think we lost over 50 feet about two or three years ago. And so it's been continually going downhill, literally. This erosion almost wiped out the road along the river and threatened a riverside park. Well, over on this side nearest our park, we had a sheer drop off and we had dangerous trees in the water where you couldn't hardly get a canoe in or out. Not a very good environment for recreation. 
The erosion makes the river less accessible and further detaches it from the floodplain. It affects the quality of fishing, boating, on the water, and it affects downstream water quality because all of this water carries sediment downstream to other properties and to lakes and reservoirs where we may have some problems there with water quality. When sediment washes away from landscapes or farmland, it brings with it nutrients and other materials that act as pollutants in the stream. In addition to sediment being a pollutant in and of itself, many of the pollutants that come off of our landscape like to stick to sediment. So as we have an increased sediment load coming down the stream, that sediment will be moved downstream. And in Oklahoma, most of our streams lead to a reservoir that are often used for recreational purposes and for drinking water and lots of other uses. The increase in contaminants such as nutrients and heavy metals will degrade the quality of our downstream reservoirs, causing conditions like algae blooms and decreasing the quality of our drinking water. We work with nature. We don't try to resist the forces that nature naturally has moving through a meandering valley. We actually work with that and we allow those forces to create the scour areas, the pools, provide the riffles, the runs, the glides but we recognize that there are processes that we can help with. Coming up in our next segment, working with nature to manage creeks and streams.